Welcome to the last set news. My name is Rob, and today it's just a it's an interesting day because we see that um, a crypto exchange token is breaking in the top ten. And when I take a look at it, uh, I don't usually start all, all my videos off or any of my videos off these days with uh, price action, but today is just one of those days where we have to take a look at what's going on. And one of those is OKB number eight, and you can see here that it is uh, it has skyrocketed in the top ten. I remember seeing it a couple of weeks ago it was in the top thirty. And before that, I didn't even really recognize it down in the top uh, 60 or 70. And now here we are sitting pretty at number eight. And you can see that over the last seven days or so, it's it's uh, manifested itself to 31% in seven days, 2% in 24 hours. And that, of course, is the token for OKX. So the question that I had was, first of all, is what does OKB, the utility token of OKX, actually do? And it took a look from the website and uh, does three things, trading fee discounts, passive income, and token sales. Tell me where you've heard this story before. Don't tell me right now. Put it in the comment section. We'll talk about it in a second. But there are some things you need to be aware of. And that is that OKX is pretty big. It's a very big exchange. If you're not familiar with it, this is a website called nomics.com. There's a link in the description. You can verify this data yourself. And you can see that Binance, as far as volume goes, last 24 hours, you're looking at $74 billion or 27%, so a quarter of all crypto, digital asset trades in the entire world is on a Binance, a quarter. Next to that, in a far second place is OKX. Then you got Bybit and BitGit and BingX and so on and so forth. Coinbase is all the way down here and a bunch of other ones I don't even know. So me as an American citizen, I can't even use OKX, but it is interesting just how fast it skyrocketed to number eight and who knows if that's done. And the question is, is why? Well, the answer is here. This is uh, from the Twitter account Star. This is uh, Ming Zing Star Zhu, nailed it. He is one of the co-founders or founders of uh, OKX. And on February 15th, he said, um, he said, hey, we hit an all-time high. It's one of the few crypto digital assets that have actually hit its all-time high as of today. It's February 20, 2023. And it's doing pretty good. And he says, look, all-time high is good news. Also, it's the community's trust to the exchange OKX. A new OKB chain will be launched in Q1 2023, which is independent with current OKX chain. Start to build OKB decentralized ecosystem or looking into DeFi. And then he goes on to further clarify this point and says, to clarify, OKX chain is a proof of stake chain, which is totally open and co-built by the communities. OKB chain is developed and operated by OKX company itself, kind of like what Binance does. The two chains are totally separate. So it just is interesting to me that if the chains are separate, we got OKB here and it's rocking up number eight. I wonder if why people are, are buying this, this token moving forward. Again, it sounds like this could be the greatest thing of all time. And I not to not to you know be the the wet blanket, but they are doing some good things. One of those things is uh, proof of reserves. We talked about this many a time. A lot of exchanges have talked about it after the collapse of, you know, FTX and Voyager and Celsius, BlockFi, things like that. So they talk about proof of reserves and they're actually putting their money where their mouth is. And you can verify all this information. I'll put this link in the description. You can verify it via the Merkle tree where you can put in your uh, specific address and find all the different cryptos that are in there. And then to make it even easier, it said, look, here's our proof of reserve ratios. We have a Bitcoin reserve ratio of 104%, ETH reserve 104, meaning they are essentially have more than what they actually need. USDT reserve ratio is 102%, which is nice. You know, it's, it's pleasant, that's cute, it's adorable. And then also they said, look, you can verify all this stuff also on crypto quant, on chain data, and you can take a look at the different metrics against other centralized exchanges. And one of the big things they touted, they touted, which was, a clean reserve. And what is that? A clean reserve is the total reserve of each exchange, excluding exchange native tokens. And why is that important? Because I don't know if you remember this, but there's a, uh, there's a company called FTX. And uh, unfortunately, they put a lot of their value on their FTT token, which was uh, you know wildly overvalued and it went to zero. And unfortunately, that didn't hold up because they were, or they had all their assets in one section, and that's what part of the reason of why FTX collapsed. So you want to take a look at the exchange native tokens. Is it a clean reserve? So if we take a look uh, itself, 
all exchanges, they just group them all together, which is Binance, Crypto.com, OKX, Deribit, KuCoin, Bitfinex, Huobi, and Bybit. 91% are clean reserves. And there's a nice little data point here, not really important to me. If we just scroll down, we can see uh, just how much Binance, for example, as far as clean reserve, it's 94%, which is pretty darn good. And if we scroll down even more and we take a look at, here's OKX, they have 100% clean reserve. Even though that OKB token is, is skyrocketing, they are not putting that up uh, as far as the assets or to verify the assets of everything that they have, uh, the valuation uh, of their exchange. Now, if we go down a little bit further, Bitfinex is 73%. So that's so. Just be aware of these things. Also, crypto.com is ninety-five point eight percent. It's pretty good, actually, ninety-five point eight percent. And then going further down, KuCoin eighty-two percent. That doesn't look too hot as they're uh, putting up their exchange token. Which honestly, I don't know if it really holds any water. Huobi is even worse, fifty-nine point three nine percent. That's pretty darn awful. I don't know if you'd want to bid in, in Huobi and Dairy Bit, which kind of smaller ones. He's hundred percent. So that's great. These are the good things that that OKX is doing, right? Proof of reserves, doing audits, doing great things. They have clean reserves, very nice. However, on this article here, it talks about OKX's February proof of reserve shows 8.6 billion USD. It's pretty good. With over a quarter million users viewing reserves and liabilities. And they say that more than 175,000 unique users checked OKX's proof of reserves. Now we did ourselves too. And over 90,000 unique users viewed proof of liabilities. And this is a sticking point. Why is this important? It's because this is also the reason why FTX went down. Is because they had so much in liabilities. They're like, hey, we got a ton of assets. Well, that's great that you have, but what's your liabilities? Who do you owe? How many different people do you have to pay back? Well, okay, that's a little bit different. This was the FTX balance sheet. After 5 billion customer withdrawals, you had liquid assets. This is debatable. 0 0.9 billion right? Less than a billion. Less liquid, 5.5. E-liquid, total assets with 9.6 billion. Liabilities with $8.9 billion. That's a lot of liabilities. And then, of course, it says, well, what was it all about? Well, it was the different cryptos that they had, uh, which were uh, somewhat liquid. Serum, Solana, their FTT token, APT, MAPS. And it was an issue because of liabilities. Now, me personally, I couldn't find the proof of liabilities anywhere on the website. I just couldn't find it. Apparently, 90,000 people have viewed it. I guess I just couldn't find it that, and I was looking pretty tough. However, it's not just that. It's just that even though we give a lot of credence to these, these centralized exchanges, do we not learn a lesson for different things? I'm not saying to not invest into it. I'm not saying to invest in, into OKX. It looks like a fine exchange if, the, if you want to use it for what it's built for, which is essentially, I'll give you fiat, you give me crypto and I will take it off in cold storage device. And that's what I'll do. There's just this thing called terms of service, in terms of use. This is the thing that always got me. It's the thing that we really should pay attention to a lot more. And I think we learned lessons with FTX and all the rest of them. This is in their OKX.com support, their articles. In terms of service, custody risk. In certain circumstances permitted by the applicable laws and regulations are Market practice of the relevant jurisdiction, OKX may register or record a user's account in the name of the custodian or under OKX's name. So the user account, you, they will just say, no, that's ours, that's OKX. That's just the name alone, but it gets worse. If the accounts are held in the name of the custodian or OKX's name, such assets may not be segregated, i.e. commingled from OKX's assets and in the event of a default, but the custodian or OKX may not be as well protected from claims of the creditors of the custodian or OKX's creditors, or would be the case if the user's client assets had been segregated from the assets of the custodian or OKX says it. What it's saying is this, look, we can co-mingle it. That's just the risk that you're going to take. If you don't want to take it, then don't play here. And that's pretty much what it comes down to. Again, I'm not, I have nothing against OKX. I don't use OKX. I can't I can't even transact with uh, OKX because I'm an American citizen. I just put this video out because when we take a look at how things skyrocket, there's like this mentality switch and people start to look at that and go, okay, you know what? I have FOMO. I'm missing out on this. I need to do something. I need to buy this. Hold on. Wait. It's not how much money you make. It's how much money you keep. And a lot of people have learned their lesson with the Voyagers, the Celsius, 
the FTXs and the BlockFi's. So just be careful out there. And that's it. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is very time sensitive, but that's all we have for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.